that. Okay, great. Well, it is 6.30, and I call this meeting of the Ramsey Washington Suburban Cable Commission to order. As previously noticed, this meeting is being conducted by telephonic means pursuant to Minnesota statute section 13D.021 in connection with the declared public health emergency in response to coronavirus. Meetings and meetings conducted under Minnesota statute section 13D.02 are not practical or prudent because of a health pandemic or declared emergency. The commission's executive director is physically present at the commission's regular meeting location. Commission members can hear one another and can hear all discussion and testimony. All votes will be conducted by roll call. Members of the public are invited to participate in this meeting by calling into the teleconferencing system. Tim, would you please take the roll call? Uh, starting with Birchwood, Randy LaFoy. Here. Lisa Reitzeld. Delwood, Bob Nuffert. Here. Uh, Joanne Frain. Here. Okay. Uh, Grant, Jeff Huber. Here. Bonin. Uh, Lake Elmo, Katrina Beckstrom. Here. Welcome, Katrina. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Matamidi, Karen Gotchberg. Here. Uh, Oakdale, Lori Polterbeck. Here. Kevin Zabel. Uh, White Bear Lake, Les Dom. Here. Township, Ron Den. Luke Mashad. Here. Finally, I'll call uh, Beverly Frent, although I, she did indicate she might not be able to be here uh, today. Uh, Bev. Okay. Vicki Keating. Okay. Uh, so, Madam Chair, um, everyone, the floor will be called and you have a quorum can proceed. Great, thank you. Is there anyone on the call that would like to speak this evening under open podium? Once again, anybody that would like to speak under open podium? Hearing none, we'll move to approval of the agenda. Are there any suggested changes to the agenda? And if not, I would look for a motion to approve as presented. So move. So move. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Tim, would you please take the roll call vote? Uh, Randy LaFoy? Aye. Bob Nufford? Aye. Approved. Jeff Huber? Jeff Huber? I think we have lost Jeff. Uh, Katrina Backstrom? Aye. Karen Gott? Aye. Lori Polkerbeck? Aye. Jeff Dom? Aye. Luke Bishop? Aye. And Jeff Huber, are you on? Yeah, I'm here, Tim. I lost the call. Aye. Okay, thank you. Uh, motion carries. Thank you. Then we will move on to consent agenda. Are there any questions or comments regarding anything listed under the consent agenda? And if not, I would look for a We have a motion by Les and a second by Randy. Tim, would you please take the roll call vote? Yes. Uh, Randy LaFoy? Aye. Bob Nefford? Aye. Karen Gatchberg? Aye. Lori Polkerbeck? Aye. Les Down? Aye. Luke Machat? Aye. Uh, we'll move on to reports. Uh, and first, I have nothing as the chairperson. Um, is there any report um, for the treasurer? Madam Chair, the, the financial reports are in the packet. Uh, Ron Den uh, had a conflict tonight. Uh, he's commission treasurer, of course, and uh, so he was not able to, uh, to be here. 
Okay, thank you. Then we'll move on to Executive Director, Kim. Thank you, Madam Chair, Commission members. Um, since the last meeting, with special meeting that we had in December, I wanted to just bring you up to speed on the franchise renewal with Comcast. Of course, we had been in a mediation for several months, um, and uh, has been achieved and signed by the effective attorneys for each party. Um, and I am now in a position to share that uh, publicly. We'll get that out to commission members uh, and also to the staff so they can get a preview of what uh, the new franchise will look like. Um, the term sheet really addressed about 15 sort of big elements uh, that had to be negotiated, and um, I think is uh, very consistent with what you heard at that December. the substance of those uh, those elements. Uh, so the next uh, step is in this process uh, is to translate those concepts into uh, a legal document along with resolving uh, some other important things that weren't really subject in matter in the, uh, the mediation but need to be uh, addressed uh, in any case. Uh, and so the, in, in the next step is to to put all that together and have a document uh, considered by the commission, hopefully in time for a February 11 uh, special commission meeting. Uh, assuming that happens and uh, the commission is, um, is, is you know, approves it and wants to recommend it to the member cities, then the uh, document would need to go around to each for review and approval. Um, the franchise, the, proposed effective date of a new franchise would be April 1st. So all of the timing in terms of reviews and approvals and adoptions um, needs to ideally happen by, by uh, April 1st. So we have our work cut out for document prepared uh, and being able for folks to be able to see it and, um, and make the necessary uh, approvals. Um, and uh, of course, the ultimate document it takes the form of an, of an ordinance, so each community is approving an ordinance, and in some cases that will require two readings, if, you know, in a, for any, so, uh, you know, we're really sort of on a tight timeline um, in, in those instances. Um, the, uh, in, you know, it, renewal in terms of the term, that brief discussion with Ron uh, Den as commission chairman to, uh, I'm sorry, as commission treasurer, uh, so that he can begin to understand uh, the, the new financial uh, implications on franchise fees and peg funding and begin, a, a, you know, a process that all commission and member communities want to sort of rebudget, reorganize. Um, framework of a new franchise. So that's underway, um, and that's sort of the, the, the brief update on, on, uh, on the, uh, the franchise renewal. Of course, it's the most important thing happening in terms of uh, the commission and its activity and going forward. And uh, I, as I said, I will um, get the information out to commission members on some of these details uh, as soon as possible, and certainly um, for a February 11th special meeting, um, assuming we have a document to look at at that point. Um, otherwise, you know, in terms of programming and community television, are fairly straightforward. Be happy to answer any questions. Uh, obviously, winter sports are back uh, is, as of uh, kind of recent weeks, uh, and so that's been good. Um, we've been covering hockey, basketball, those kinds of things, uh, along with all the other normal programming we do. But it's good to have the, um, the sports back in, in, in gear. Uh, we had a hockey game that we did a week and a half ago or so. It was Matamita. And um, we ran it on YouTube Live as well. And it had really excellent viewership. There were the broadcast. So um, 
it's uh, good to be able to provide that to the, the public since they, not everybody can go to the games because there's uh, limitations on, mm -hmm. on uh, spectators at these venues. And so uh, glad to be able to provide that um, as a way to see the, um, our local sports. Uh, Any questions or comments for Tim? All right, then we'll move on to operations updates. Uh, there are program logs and reports in our packets. Any questions or comments? Then moving on to committee reports, we have the minutes from one committee meeting. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll move on to attorney. Uh, do we have an attorney on the call this evening? We do. Vince. You, you do, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Hi, Mike. <laughs> no, sorry, this is Vince here. Oh, it's Vince. I'm sorry. <laughs> My mic impression is getting too good. Sorry. <laughs> it, you sounded just like <laughs> No problem. Well, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, Commissioners, uh, try and keep this brief for you as always. Uh, just a few things. We have a new FCC Commissioner. Uh, Nathan Symington was confirmed as the newest Commissioner by the Senate back on December 8th of last year. took office on December 14th. Uh, as a reminder, ex-Commissioner Michael O'Reilly's term ended on December 11th, uh, 2020 which means that after ex-chairman Ajit Pai stepped down on January 20th, the FCC is now left with two Democratic commissioners and two Republican commissioners uh, until another Democratic commissioner is nominated by President Biden and approved by the Senate. Uh, commissioner Jessica Rosenworcel has been named acting chairwoman uh, until a chair can be uh, named and, and confirmed by the Senate. Uh, next, the Television Viewer Protection Act of 2019, we'll call it the, the TVPA, became effective on December 20th. Uh, the TVPA requires cable operators to provide more transparent pricing and billing information. Uh, it allows customers to cancel service contracts within 24 hours of signing up, and it prohibits cable operators uh, from charging customers for using customer-owned equipment. That actually was an issue in Minnesota. Up in northern Minnesota, Frontier had been charging customers for using their own cable modems <laughs> with the issue. Um, the, the, these are issues are similar to issues that we've seen in Minnesota in the past. Uh, I know that both Comcast and CenturyLink have had issues uh, with our state regulatory agencies and with the state AG's office uh, around their pricing practices. TVPA prevents or is a federal mechanism now uh, that the commission can actually use to, to say, hey, cable operator, you have to actually disclose the price that you're going to charge to a subscriber. No advertising one price and then adding on this regional sports fee, this broadcast TV fee, and effectively doubling the monthly service price. Uh, the TVPA was originally supposed to become effective back in March of last year, but was delayed uh, by the FCC, uh, with the FCC citing COVID-19 as the cause for delay. Uh, next, the FCC finally updated its over-the-air reception device rules to allow broadband-only hub and relay antennas to be more easily installed on residential, uh, excuse me, residential structures. Uh, as a reminder, this commission previously filed reply comments in this proceeding, urging the FCC to, uh, we'll say, more closely consider whether it had the statutory authority to preempt state and local authority in the manner proposed. Uh, the FCC's ruling and rule changes ultimately represent a much more limited preemption of state and local authority uh, than had been originally proposed, and the FCC, in its ruling, uh, specifically called out and responded to this commission's reply comments. Um, and then finally, uh, in its latest COVID relief measure, Congress has designated $3.2 billion to provide up to a $50 monthly discount on internet services and equipment for low-income households. Uh, if the FCC elects to utilize this full benefit amount, uh, internet subscriptions, uh, such as Comcast Internet Essentials and, and others that cost less than $50 per month, would be free to low-income consumers under this program, uh, assuming the service provider, like Comcast, participates in the program. 
Uh, the FCC is required to implement this program. comments about how the program should be administered. Uh, public comments were due uh, just a few days ago uh, on January 25th, and reply comments are due by February 16th, uh, if that interests you at all. I'm happy to answer uh, questions on that or, or any other topic that comes to mind. This is Karen. Uh, did you say that uh, Comcast can opt out of this? So this is an opt-in program. So Comcast uh, has indicated um, that they want to participate in this program. Uh, okay. uh, it's uh, they have they've they've met with FCC commissioners, kind of discussing the merits of the program uh, and discussing them very in a very favorable manner. Um, but it isn't something they have to participate in. Uh, I, I think it would be. Oh. It would be uh, very interesting to me if they chose not to participate, given that um, the government is essentially paying people's internet bills for them. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Any additional questions or comments? All right. Thank you. We'll move on to the cable company. Do we have a representative from Comcast on the call? Nothing. We will move on to unfinished business. Um, nothing in that category. So we'll move to new business. And we have the 2020 audit services contract. Tim. Yes, Madam Chair, Commission members, um, what you have before you is a proposal from the Commission's auditors, uh, Clifton, Larson, Alla, Clifton, Larson, Allen, for audit services in connection with the uh, 2020 Commission financial financials. Uh, they have uh, provided this service to us in previous years. Have done uh, what we feel is a very good job. Uh, 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 the Commission budgets for this, and uh, the proposed audit fee is $11,500. Uh, which is within the, our budget uh, that we set for 2021. Uh, if you enact this, then we'll sign off and they'll get to, to start it on it. Um, and of course, this is um, necessary to use the audit, final audit figures um, that, that, they, that they determine, um, you know, the, uh, the um, redistributed to the community. So, um, the normal course of action as we do that in is, is finished. So assuming that timing, um, you would, uh, that, that's what's in store. Okay, any questions or comments? Well, I have a question, Karen. Um, on, under fees, it talks about a technology and client support fee of 5% of all professional fees built. I, I don't understand that. That's in addition to the 11,000. Where, where are you seeing that, Karen? Uh, there's no page. Well, it's the next to last page. Uh. Oh, page six. Yeah, I see. Um, I I haven't seen that uh, as a. I don't know that that normally triggers with us. Um, I can ask about it, um, but at the moment, I I don't know that I understand it um, the way it's listed in here. They've usually just billed us a not to exceed eleven thousand five hundred, and I can, can I'm glad to confirm that with them. Um, there yeah, are, because it doesn't say that. I, I will. Um, I'll amend the the contract to to reflect that. Okay. Because I don't re I don't recall this ever being um, part of what they've ultimately. Mm -hmm. And then there will be will be other fees that will be in addition to the eleven five. Well, not if we remove that, which I would, which I will do. Well, under other fees, it talks about time and expenses for yeah. legal counsel, and you're going to. 
those things are needed by us to to go through. Right. Uh, and I don't think they would be. Um, and uh, it but if they did, then then we would have to spend extra. That's correct. Mm-hmm. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, I think that's just their boilerplate language. It has never come into play with us before. Um, okay. Well, I didn't understand that 5% thing. Yeah, I'll ask about it and see if we can just strike it. I'm sure that won't be a problem. Okay. Thank you. Any additional questions or comments? If not, I would look for a motion. Move to approve the hiring of. I I can't remember the name. Let's see. The hiring of Clifton Larson Allen LLP for our audit. Is that what you the want? Second from Grant. Right, we have a motion by Karen and a second by Jeff. Uh, Tim, would you please take the roll call vote? Yes. Uh, Randy LaFoy. Yes. Bob Nuffer. Yes. Jeff Huber. Aye. Katrina Beckstrom. Aye. Karen Gotchberg. Aye. Lori Polkerbeck. Aye. Luke Michaud. Yes. The motion carries. Thank you. Then we will move on to other business. And we have extend equipment grant deadline through 2021. Tim. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair, Commission members. Uh, this is a recommendation uh, to extend the deadline for our municipal grant program through, uh, through all of 2021. There are a number of communities that um, are, are still uh, making plans and implementing equipment upgrades. Uh, and so the, the, uh, the recommendation is to continue to allow that to happen throughout 2021. Um, and uh, uh, I'd certainly be happy to take any questions, but it's, it's a very fairly simple uh, change to the, uh, the deadline date um, to enable our, our member cities to take advantage of the you know, the full funds that are still available. Any questions or comments? Jeff with Grant, thank you. That's a great uh, a great move. We're gonna need the, uh, the time to plan, implement, and in place. Uh, sounds good to me. Do we need a motion on this, Lori? Yes, please. Motion to move the deadline through 2021 for equipment upgrades. Second, less Dom. We have a motion by Jeff and a second. Yeah, uh, Luke here. Um, is that the, the portion of the total equipment cap IMP fund that's, that was in the treasurer's report? Is that the 1.422? These are funds that have already been set aside. Um, they're probably not. I'm not looking at that report right, up, right, right now, but that's uh, the equipment fund in which these funds are sub sort of allocated uh, so that our member cities can upgrade uh, their telecasting equipment for the city meetings, et cetera. Um, right. So that's in there. That's reflected in the treasury. Right? Okay. okay, so that's it's part of the total equipment cap IMP fund of one point four two two million. That's correct. Um, is that going to be affected at all with this new? Uh, is this funds already set aside, dedicated for this? No issues. The funds, uh, the funds that we have in our possession for this uh, will remain, uh, you know, uh, as long as commissions. It's not sub. It won't change. You have outlined in your policies. 
So uh, now there may be new kind of influx of some of the new funding to augment that, or um, but that's another or decision. Or is just is dealing with the the funds that are already in our possession. Understood. All right. Thank you. Any additional discussion? Uh, yes, Randy LaFoy. Yes. Bob Nuffer. Yes. Jeff Huber. Aye. Katrina Beckstrom. Aye. Karen Gatchberg. Aye. Lori Palkerbeck. Aye. Les Down. Yes. Luke Michaud. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Thank you. Um, at this time, I would look for a motion to adjourn. So moved. So I have, and I, I'll wait. <laughs> oh, when can I say something? Okay. Well, why don't we um, go ahead, Karen? Well, I was just thinking that uh, we have some resignations, and in particular, Newton, who's been with the commission for so long, uh, that we should. Send him a letter of thanks or whatever. Absolutely. More. We will absolutely do that. And along with Amy Modine, she served for a long time as well. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. No, no, no. And th thank you for bringing that up. All right. Um, and at this time, uh, do we have a motion to adjourn? Yes. Um. All right, we have a motion and would you please take the roll call vote? Yes. Randy LaFoy? Yes. Bob Nuffer? Aye. Jeff Huber? Aye. Katrina Beckstrom? Aye. Karen Gotchberg? Aye. Lori Polkerbeck? Aye. Les Down? Yes. Luke Michaud? Aye. Motion carries. All right. Thanks. Have a great night, everyone. Thank you. Okay. okay. Yep. Okay. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Anybody Bye. going? Oh. oh.